What's up, Canon R7 enthusiasts and members, angry members of the where the hell is my Canon R7 pre-order club? Don't get mad at me. Don't throw tomatoes. My Daniel Ricardo shirt stains very easily. This is F1 merch. I love sports, and I don't care who knows. Hockey, 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 football, golf. I'm going to clip this on to the lens hood of the Samyang 85, and I can pretty much guarantee that this is the first time the Samyang 85mm f1.4 RF AF has been used as a microphone. Today, we're going to talk about the R7 for wedding photography. I have photographed a wedding with it. I have photographed a fake wedding with it. I photographed this shoot in the mountains with it. I photographed Landon going through puddles with it. I'm Taylor Jackson and welcome to Lando in a puddle. Biking, all kinds of things. Also, if you're interested, there's a free preset pack available if you like presets and you have a camera and you can use these presets on your camera photos. Link in the description. Go get it either now after this video. Also, the locations you've been seeing. If you're interested, come on through to our BAMP workshop where we put people in wedding dresses and then you just get to go there and you get to take photos of Sam Hurd, Carolyn Tran, Scott Robert Lim, Nicole Ashley, myself, Lindsay will be there. It's gonna be a good time. We can eat tacos together in real life. Although I think capacity at the taco restaurant is like 25, so I'll have to do two shifts, I guess. But we can figure that out later. The Canon R7 though, let's talk about it. The autofocus is great all day. It makes you lazy. You point the camera, you point this Samyang 85mm f1.4 microphone in the direction of some people, and you're gonna get some nice photos. When it comes to weddings, there are also two card slots, which I find to be very mentally relaxing. The image quality is great across the entire day, including low light. There is a video about low light performance on the channel if you're interested, as well as some downloads that you can just download and look at them and play around with them and see how it, how it reacts. And the battery life for wedding days is also incredible. I think, I'm, I'm gonna say that I shot over 3000 frames at the wedding we were at and I saw two bars of battery left that remained at the end of the day, which I think is pretty, pretty darn incredible. It's also cheaper than the R6 and you can use all the R lenses Asterix. We'll talk about that in a moment. So what's bad about the Canon R7? For me as a heavy Canon R3 microphone user, as well as the R6, it took me a minute to get used to the fact that there are no, that there's only two dials. So this has a dial on the back. It's got the big back Canon wheel and then one on your back thumb and one on your front finger. The R7 has a back wheel and a joystick in the middle of that wheel and a front wheel but it does not have a third additional wheel for you, which means maybe, I don't know, make, make your aperture on your lens. The control ring on your lens is now aperture. Problem solved. Oh, and it's an APS-C crop sensor, but you already knew that. So right now, there's not a whole lot. I don't know if there's gonna be a roadmap or if they're just gonna drop a bunch of lenses for APS-C, but as of right now, there's a couple that have kind of been announced-ish, but overall, I wouldn't consider it on the level of Fuji where Fuji has so many, I guess the entire line is APS-C or, or medium format. And they have just a ton of APS-C glass that is really, really professional quality. I don't know if Canon's going to do that or if APS-C is going to remain kind of their prosumer. The, I guess the thing is that you can just use any of the RF glass, but I guess this comes kind of as two sides that you will be buying full frame glass, which is more expensive. And with an APS-C camera, you're not really using the full lens, but if you do choose to upgrade it in the future, wedding photographers need two cameras. If that second camera, that, that main camera eventually becomes an R3 or an R6 or whatever might be in the future for Canon, you don't really have to upgrade your lenses. You already have full frame lenses, which is nice. And when it comes to the APS-C lenses, I will be testing them as soon as I can get production models. So maybe subscribe here if you're interested in that. Uh, I am honestly really interested to see what they do with APS-C glass. I like to travel the small, small kit. And if they can make my travel kit, my vlog kit, my on, I don't know, YouTube content creation kit, very, very small, that's nice to me. I don't, I don't need to shoot everything at 1.4, 1 1.2, 1 even 2.8. I'll take it. I'll take a 2.8 on a crop, which kind of effectively looks like a, I don't know, let's call it an F4 look, light transmission. We won't get into the physics. My first purchase for, if, if you're looking at this and you have nothing right now, you have, you have nothing, no clothes, no place to live. No, you have those. You have the 
basics covered. But you're looking at the Canon R7 as potentially your first wedding camera. What I would recommend is also budgeting to get the 35 millimeter F1.8 for the Canon RF series. That as a main lens for a wedding day is incredible. If you shoot weddings with a thousand people that are way more chaotic than what you usually see here on the channel, maybe disregard this advice and get something that's a little bit wider. Maybe wait for that 24 to come out or even go for the 16 2.8. Those would both be very, very nice for more photojournalistic events. For me, the equivalent of 35 times 1.6, 1.6 crop factor on Canon, it is a 56 millimeter lens, which I think is nice. It's very useful. It's not quite an 85, not quite a 50. Kind of fits weirdly, not even close to in the middle, closer to 50, but it will help you create some incredible work on a wedding day. Also, side note, I'm very excited about the 24 1.8. And if you're watching this in the future and that lens is already out, good for you. You can go get it now. The other option for you is if you want to go get the EF adapter and uh, just use older EF glass, or maybe get the main as a 35 or the 24, whatever it's gonna be. And then your secondary lenses, like a wider lens, maybe a 70 to 200, maybe that is an EF adapter. And I would say that that would be a great way to save money. So many used lenses are now on the market for EF glass. So I would take advantage of that and just kind of fill the gaps. And then there's no, people have done side-by-side -side tests and there's, it's, it's a very hard sell. So I know if you watch the channel, you see my gear kit, I do have the 7200 F2.8 RF and side by side, I think it's very difficult to tell the difference between that and the older glass. So in the beginning, unless you're shooting 60 weddings a year, I probably wouldn't recommend hopping straight to that. In fact, let's talk about that for a moment. If it was my first year, so my perspective and all the gear that you're seeing here on the channel is all from somebody that's almost 20 years into a full-time wedding photography career, shooting a lot of content as well. And so while you may see me shooting different things, it doesn't mean that that's exactly right for you and that's what you absolutely need to do a wedding day. If I could go back to looking at the entire industry right now, so say I'm just getting into the industry, I maybe have a wedding booked a year and two months from now specifically, and I am looking at what I should get should I go Fuji? Should I go Nikon? Should I go Canon? I've decided now on the Canon R7. I would recommend, I don't know. I, I've purchased into the Canon lineup. So I guess that's my decision. I am not paid by Canon. In fact, they won't even respond to my emails. So I have no relationship whatsoever with Canon. Nikon relationship, great. Fuji relationship, incredible. I love Fuji Canada. Hasselblad, no. I don't have Leica, great relationship, love Leica. Canon, no email response. Maybe 2023, let's hope. Anyways, I've clearly chosen their products and that has nothing to do with any sort of backdoor deals that are going on or any sort of paychecks. They don't pay me anything. I buy all my stuff from BJ Photo, which is over here, so I'm trying not to rock the microphone too much. Uh, Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, if you do live in the area, come on through family owned local camera shop. One of the last of, I would say that entire generation that those don't exist anymore. Well, they do, because there's one right there. There's another one. There's like four in my town actually. We're pretty fortunate here. Anyways, I shop at BJ Photo, buy all my stuff from them. And I really have gone in the Canon direction since turning mirrorless. So I was Nikon digital SLR from 2005 up until last year-ish, maybe two years ago. And I was kind of shooting both Nikon and Canon. And now I'm just kind of shooting Canon. Uh, basically just got too expensive to maintain two full kits. And I tried to do it for here on YouTube. Both options, like the, the benefit is that there's no bad cameras on the market anymore. Everyone's doing incredible work when it comes to, to making cameras for you to go take your pictures. And you can't really make a bad decision. The negative is that this puts you into decision paralysis forever because there's no right, exact right camera. As camera conspiracies would say, all they want is a perfect camera and they'll never make it for you because then you won't buy anything else. So they want you to buy the R7 and they want you to get the R3, but they want you to use this for wildlife because it has a crop and this for weddings. We're getting lost here. The Canon R7, the IBIS is really good. So the reason that I would go for the R7 over the R10 is simply for the in-body image stabilization. When it comes to video, it's so helpful. When it comes to photography, also helpful especially lower light, if you're shooting slow shutter speeds or you wanna be doing something like we were 
doing some fun tests and you can shoot a second. You can shoot two seconds if you're really careful, handheld, which is pretty incredible. And when it comes to the IBIS, uh, in the crop sensor of the Canon R7, you get less lens warble or IBIS warble or whatever it is, where the edges get all jello-y and vertigo-y and, and not good. That happens a lot in the Canon R6. Um, it, it's better on the Canon R3 microphone that I'm holding here, but it almost goes away entirely. It still does exist on the Canon R7, but not quite as much. When it comes to hybrid, talk a little bit about ergonomics as well. When it comes to doing both photo and video on the Canon R7, it's really, really nice. It's on your back finger, and it's much better than the R6. It makes me a lot happier. I can just move from photo to video mode, and your cards seem to dump to, or your, I guess, buffer dumps to your cards very, very quickly. So as soon as you switch to video mode, you can be recording. So if you do want to do photo video coverage on a wedding day, it is definitely possible with the Canon R7. The size of the camera also, some people really hate it. They're like, why can't I get the biggest battery grip that's ever existed in the history of time? I shoot this thing. This is too big. If it didn't check all the other boxes, I would not use a camera of this size. I like the size of the Canon R6, of the Canon R7, but that's completely a personal preference. I don't use a battery grip for anything, and I get kind of, well, not upset, but I would rather not use this if possible. I enjoy using my Canon R6, and I use my R6 as a main if I'm doing photo-only coverage, and when I'm doing hybrid, I use this big thing. Now, this brings us to the conclusion, and kind of what I'm doing with my life. Again, remember that I'm 20 years into a career. I shoot a lot of weddings, I do a lot of content, and I have a proper business, I guess, that does necessitate product and also brings in money, and also I need tax write-offs. And I am personally sticking with my Canon R3 as a main for hybrid photo video days and the Canon R6 that I'm recording this on right now. And the R7 is not going to necessarily be part of my wedding kit all the time. Now that said, again, that's from my perspective of somebody that's been in the industry for a long time. If I was just getting into the industry and I was looking for the best piece of equipment I could get for the lowest amount of money, I would definitely put the R7 into the mix of cameras that I would be buying, absolutely for sure. And if I did have a Canon R6 and I was looking for a second backup camera, I would maybe be looking at that R7. It does make your kit a lot more versatile if you have an 85 millimeter lens and you shoot it and it's not wide, long enough on your, your camera and you're like, oh no, I need to get closer during the ceremony. You put that 85 on your crop sensor camera, your Canon R7, and all of a sudden, I forget what the math is, but you got like a 120-ish millimeter lens and you're getting full megapixels at that 120, whereas if you go into APS-C crop mode, in here, you lose a lot of megapixels and it's fine, it's deliverable, but it's maybe not the most ideal. I would also personally be very, very, very interested in the Canon R7 if weddings and portraits were maybe 50% or less of my work that I do with the camera and more of that work would be wildlife or more of that work would be macro photography, the Canon R7 would be increasingly more attractive to me. If I was that human, unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, 98% of my business is pretty much weddings or talking about weddings here on YouTube. So that's kind of my decision, my process. So Canon R7, incredible camera. I would pick up that 35, run that 35 in the R7 all day. You'll be a very, very happy panda when it comes to photography. And then maybe pick up that 16, which kind of becomes a 24, I guess, plus tax a little bit. And between those two lenses and that one camera body, obviously bring a backup camera body. If you're a wedding photographer, you gotta be able to finish the day if something happens. But with those two lenses, you could honestly pretty much get by most wedding days and be very, very happy with photos. So that's what I have to say here on the Samyang 85 millimeter F1.4 microphone. And go get those presets if you want presets. Drop any questions you have in the comments. I'm happy to respond to you. And there's a number of other Canon R7 videos up on the channel. So if you're interested in this camera, I've run it through some pretty extensive tests, I guess, or real life tests. I'm not doing anything uh, we, we leave the, the clinical stuff for Gerald undone. I just like to get out and take pictures of things in the world and make people drive through puddles and whatnot. And that's all. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. More things to come in August, the month of Olive Garden. I don't know if that's true.